morning and happy Easter bunny to everybody out here. I took a little walk on the Mayo Bridge yesterday and for today I just wanted to share this with you and I'm going to read from the plaque and while the video is playing here and what I saw yesterday. Happy Easter. Now this is the Mayo Bridge in Richmond, Virginia and it's also called the 14th Street Bridge by locals and it's got a couple other names but here's from the poster. Vastly different from the concrete and steel we stand upon today. They're talking about the bridge that we're on here. The earliest version of the Mayo Bridge was little more than a series of rickety pontoons tied together by wood planks. Built around 1787 to connect Manchester with the Northern River Bank, the first bridge, as well as the three that followed, were no match for the swirling floodwaters of the James River. And by 1802, John Mayo found himself faced with the task of building the fourth iteration of the Mayo Bridge. To do this, he relied on a workforce often available for large-scale construction projects. A group of free and enslaved black and white local and regional workers contributed brute muscle as well as highly skilled craftsmen. When construction was in full swing, 70 men could be seen working on the bridge at once. Highly skilled free black artisans, like blacksmiths Samuel Red and Clareboard Evans, supplied metalwork at the same time that Frank Shepard the Yellow Man was tarring timbers, and Frederick Ayton, a white craftsman, was plastering the toll house. These are quotes from the sign. You guys had wild names back then. Gangs of enslaved men were also involved with the construction of the Mayo Bridge, and its, its successful completion depended on the coordination between all of these groups regardless of race, trade, or social status. In return for their efforts, Mayo provided meals and whiskey for all of the workers. Hey, happy Sunday, right? After a long day of labor, the men would often eat and drink together, creating a social network that would strengthen their ties as laborers as well as communicate the news of the day. While most of the workers on the bridge were native to Richmond, the size of the project demanded temporary immigrant labor from Williamsburg and beyond, bringing men and their experiences to the capital city. Through word of mouth, enslaved laborers could seek out news of long-lost family members or learn of other events, such as troubles experienced by other bonds people or of brewing conflicts. There is speculation that Gabriel of the Prosser Plantation who spent his life in Henrico County and the city of Richmond, included Africans as far away as Jamestown in his plans for rebellion through such communication networks. That was the uh, D.F. LaProd, Chief of Research, City of Richmond, Department of Public Works, James Sidbury, Plowshares into Swords, Rebellion, Race, and Identity in Gabriel's Virginia, 1730-1810. Richard M. Lee, General Lee's City, an Illustrated Guide to the Historic Sites of Confederate Richmond. That's what's written on the bottom of this plaque. It's a pale bridge. So anyway, have a great Sunday, everyone. Thanks for watching, and peace out. Go spend time with family. What kind of fish are you catching today? White perch. Perch? Yeah, white perch. Oh, Wait. you got wow, a whole bunch of perch. Yeah. Oh, you got skills. Yeah. Been here since the morning? No, about two hours. Wow, that's a lot of work for nice. two hours. Yeah. Catch any shad? No. So I lose a heart. I left you first. Can't admit it to myself. But I guess I was wrong, knew the entire time You were my dear, leave a loving You were my dear, leave a loving You were my dear, leave a loving